President Zane Verge, CNN, the West. <laughs> they do make it an issue. Uh, they have been making it an issue for uh, many months now. Many in the international community are saying that by your signing of this bill, you're taking Uganda a step backwards, that you are not protecting the freedoms and the rights and the choices of the Ugandan people. So how do you respond to that? And specifically, uh, President Obama has said he, been, his, he was deeply disappointed by Uganda's move and says that it would complicate U.S.-Uganda relations. I've listened to everything uh, that you've said in the statement. So how would you respond to that? And do, 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 does it worry you? And have you spoken directly to President Obama about this? Well, we have been disappointed for a long time <laughs> by the conduct of the West the way you conduct yourselves there. But we just keep quiet. We just see how you do things, how the, the families, how they are organized, the, the, in all these things. We see them, we keep quiet. We never comment. Because it's not our country, maybe you like it. So, uh, since there's now an attempt at social imperialism to, to impose social values of, of one group on our society, uh, then our disappointment is now exacerbated because we, we, are, we are sorry to see that you live the way you live. But we keep quiet about it. Now you say you must also live like us. Uh, we, 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 that's why we say no. We, we say no. And, uh, Am I worried? Not at all. We should be worried about what? Because to tango needs two people to dance. If the West doesn't want to work with us because of homosexuals, then uh, we, we have enough space here to live by ourselves and do business with other people. Thank you. If there's anything I hate the most is the hypocrisy of the West, especially the United States of America. I mean, they've managed to convince the whole world that democracy is the best way to govern your people, which I have no problem with, you know, <clears throat> the government of the people, for the people, and by the people, you know, governed by the rule of law. Absolutely, the voices of the masses must, must be respected. However, when you have a country that has committed atrocities around the world, all in the name of protecting the West, or all in the name of democracy, then they've lost every right to tell other countries what to do or how to behave let me tell you what i mean let me show you an example <clears throat> look at this article it says 10 times america helped overthrow a foreign government the u.s has long facilitated regime change to support its own strategic and business interest now i'm not going to be able to run down the whole article you know just for the sake of this video but i'm going to put the link in the description below if you want to go through it I'm just going to try as much as possible to go through the key points that I'm trying to make in this video. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. After World War II, the United States began using the newly established CIA to overthrow government all around the world in a more covert manner. US leaders rationalized many of these interventions as necessary for preventing the spread of communism according to the Cold War Domino Theory. I want you guys to pay attention. Similarly, 21st century leaders would later defend U.S. Middle East intervention as necessary for fighting racism, terrorism, sorry. Now, U.S. went ahead to justify all these invasions. In 1893, they, they invaded Hawaii. In 1933, they invaded Cuba. 1953, they invaded Iran. 1954, they invaded Guatemala, Guatemala. Sorry about that. 1960 to 1965, they invaded Congo. 1963, they invaded South Vietnam. 1973, they invaded Chile. 1981 to 1990, they invaded Nicaragua. 2001, they invaded Afghanistan. In 2003, they invaded Iraq. All these countries were invaded and they had different justifications for invading this country. 
it could be either for terrorism or democracy or you know whatever bullshit lie that they could come up with just to justify invading these countries let's look at iraq which is like you know the most recent one this is the reason why they invaded iraq at this hour american and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm iraq to free its people and to defend the world from grave danger Now I hope you guys can now understand why people around the world are looking at America and the West. You guys cannot tell us what to do anymore because you've lost every credibility to be able to tell us what we can do. Imagine, not because not only did they not find the weapon of mass destruction in Iraq, which was the reason why they invaded Iraq in the first place, so many people lost their lives. 209,982 people were documented to have lost their life in the as in, in this war, as Iraqi civilians, these are civilians that lost their lives and these are only the people that were documented. There are so many other numbers that were not documented. I'm very sure these numbers is more. But then, who has been held accountable for all this? Nobody. I don't see anyone, you know, holding on any of these guys that made this call accountable. No one is holding them accountable. They are all, you know, enjoying their lives while people are dying, wasting, wasting innocent lives all in the name of protecting the democracy or protecting the West. Let's look at the Middle East, Middle Eastern countries, for example. Look at Qatar that hosted the last World Cup. In Qatar, LGBT or homosexualism is punishable by death in Qatar. So many people died, but the World Cup was still hosted. Nobody bat an eye, nobody said anything. Saudi Arabia right now, homosexualism is punishable by death. But guess what? Saudi Arabia is hosting the 2029 Asia Winter Winter Games. They won the bid. Where is the same energy? Nobody is saying anything. You don't see Joe Biden or you know all these Western puppets. You don't see them rushing to Saudi Arabia to tell them, ah, no, it's wrong. So you think you can come to Africa to tell them what to do? This is where I stand. I have no problem with the LGBT community. Whatever you want to identify yourself as, I have zero problem with it. I'm going to respect it. However. This is the point I'm trying to make in this video. Uganda and other African countries, or some African countries, majority of them practice democracy, which is the government of the people, for the people, and by the people. So which means it's safe to say that whatever law is passed in that country, the people are okay with it. And as long as the people are okay with it, the West and, you know, especially America, should stay away from them. They should not impose their own beliefs on these other countries. It's just like me coming into your house and teaching and telling you, ah, the way you're, the way you're cooking your spaghetti is wrong, cook it this way. You have every right to kick me out of your house. Exactly. That's the same way Uganda have every right to say no. Why? Because they are a sovereign country governed by the rule of law. And if the people in Uganda are okay with the law that is being passed in their country, every other person should respect their decision and stay away and mind their own business especially america and his other western puppets this is the video for today guys don't forget to like this video subscribe subscribe to my channel let me know what you guys think in the comment section about this video and if you like me to keep doing videos like this and i'll see you guys in the next one i'm out